They had had many encounters with wildlife while driving through the heavily wooded area, but he had never seen anything like this before. He looked around at his friends' faces, hoping that one of them knew what to do, but it seemed that they were as clueless as he was. None of them had ever been put in this situation before, but they all knew that they had to act fast. When they got ready to head out on that day, Steve Noop expected nothing out of the ordinary. He never could have seen this situation coming. He had been living in a rural community for a long time, but he and his friends were about to find something they had never seen before. They were driving on a road that bordered the woods, which meant that it barely had any traffic. He was chatting and having a good time with some of his best friends when Steve suddenly slammed his foot on the brakes. His friends yelled at him as they jumped up in surprise, unsure of what had just happened. But when they looked at the road, they saw the tiny, brown lump on the ground. They suspected that they had found an animal that got hit by a car, but no other cars were around and there was no evidence zero F an accident. They decided to see what was going on and got out of their car. But what they found only made things stranger. As they got closer, they realized what the animal was. It was a tiny baby deer. Steve felt his stomach twist in sadness. He couldn't stand to think that the animal might have gotten hit by a car. But as he stepped closer, the fawn's eyes opened. He was happy to see that it was still alive, but he could tell that something wasn't right. Its thin legs were positioned around its body strangely. It looked like it was trying to make itself look smaller. But one of Steve's friends had a theory. His friend suggested that maybe the deer was trying to camouflage with the road in order to avoid danger. But judging by its size, another friend thought that it might have just been born. They got closer to it and noticed that it was breathing normally, which meant that it was probably unharmed and healthy. But even if it was healthy, they weren't going to just leave it alone in the road. One friend said, I think we should leave it alone. But Steve didn't like this idea. What if another car came by and didn't notice it? He couldn't risk it getting run over. He had an idea. I'll just go up there and park my truck sideways and wait until it gets up, he explained. It should get up soon. As they waited for the fawn to get up, they heard a rustling sound coming from the bushes behind them. Right after they heard the rustle, they all felt something prickle the back of their necks, causing them to freeze in their footsteps. There was something behind them, staring at them. That was when they realized why the fawn was lying so still and trying to make itself look small. It knew of its presence all along. Although the situation could have been extremely dangerous, Paul and Steve decided to get the fawn out of the road first. But everyone else was still unsure and scared. None of them had a better idea, so they decided to help Paul and Steve. Paul slowly approached the baby deer as Steve grabbed his camera, capturing the moment. Paul worried about frightening the deer as he said, It's not gonna hurt me. I'm not worried about that. Paul was careful not to spook it as he slowly walked up to it and crouched down next to it. He tested its reaction to his presence and found that it was relatively calm. He then decided to slowly place his hands under its hind legs and lift it up. He got out of the road and started walking into the woods when the deer began to struggle. It was freaking out and trying to escape Paul's hands. It moved its legs just as Paul stepped into the grassy shoulder of the road. It was like it didn't want to go back into the woods. One friend yelled, don't drop it. But Paul's strong grip meant that he was able to lower the fawn closer to the ground. And then he let go. Then the baby deer leaped into the woods, right where something was waiting for it. What had been hiding in the woods was the baby deer's mom. The men realized that it must be the fawn's mother as they turned toward the woods and saw that, peering at them from behind the foliage, there was an adult deer. Steve felt relieved by the knowledge that at least the baby deer had a chance for survival and hadn't been abandoned. Hall turned to look at his friends with an ecstatic look on his face as soon as he saw the fawn leaping towards its ma. Yeah, he shouted with his arms in the air. The other men were also delighted that the mission was accomplished. One of them exclaimed that it was awesome. Steve, knowing what a remarkable moment it had been, decided to post the video online. But reactions differed. Some people were critical of Steve and Paul's actions, saying the fawn probably would have made its way back to its mother who was nearby if the guys had just backed away. Most people praised Paul for helping save the baby deer, though. Steve's video of the incident has been viewed over 5 million times. But are the negative reactions to the video warranted? 
As a person, it is normal to worry that a baby by itself may be in trouble. But according to the Virginia Beach Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, female deer do tend to leave their fawns on their own while it's light out, and they always come back. Most of the time, it is best to leave them alone because handling them could lead to dire consequences. The lingering human scent on a fawn could cause their mothers to reject them. So wildlife experts generally advise against touching baby deer. The Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife if recommends that. If you must handle them, you rub an old towel in the grass and wipe the fawn to remove human scent afterward. Hall had no time to clean the fawn off before it ran off. But this doesn't mean that what he did was wrong. If the fawn is found in a dangerous place, may be picked up and immediately moved several feet away from the danger. The Virginia Beach Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals says on their website, they would definitely have approved of what Paul had done that day. And we agree, too. But it's not only humans who can show an amazing amount of compassion toward other beings.